option and then sailing? That's a big question. It seems like there must be better options at 25 because we have the highest level of defection from sailing at adulthood. 95% of the 350,000 kids we have in sailing programs today will never sail after the age of 25. But I'm going to throw something else out at you. 95% of youth athletes aren't athletes after 25. 95% of people who take piano lessons aren't pianists after 25. Get it? So I have a hypothesis, and that is you all raise your hand, right? My hypothesis is everybody in this room cherishes sailing. Enough to want to do it over and over and over again. So I'm going to throw out what I think the reasons why might be. Why might you cherish sailing? Well, I think, I think, at least if this were me speaking, it matters in our lives because it connects us and it helps us build memories and it provides meaning in our lives. That's a pretty big deal. That's worth sticking with after 25. But let me add, because we get some really big life benefits out of this. We get friendships out of it. We get experiences other people probably wish for. And we get the sense that we're free. Those are really big things. You pass those on in, 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 uh, in youth-only programming. So what should we be measuring? Should we be measuring the number of kids in sailing? Or should we be measuring the, the strength of the tree, the skill level? Or we should, should be, we, we be measuring the, the, the quality of the forest? That's that key question that I wanted to bring forward. So let me provide a, a perspective. This is really the, the, uh, the outcome of the book. I have, the book is called Saving Sailing, but I have to tell you it's a lot, a lot, a lot more than sailing. It, it really is about parenting. And, and one of the things that, that I learned while reading the book is that we have the smallest amount of shared family time in the United States since World War II. So there's a cause and effect problem. Remember that I showed you the prudential chart? This is the number of sailors only. Only what we're going to do is we're going to juxtapose it against a whole new way of measuring things. So remember it goes way up until about 1979, and then it goes way down until about 2009, and we're back at, a, at kind of an ugly level. It's combined now with a line that tracks almost in a linear way. And what that line is, is how often we're sailing in family groups. We peaked. 80% of the time in 1979, we were sailing in family groups. Now, we're sailing in family groups 10% of the time. It's not, just, it's not just correlated, it's causal. I told you I couldn't help you sell boats. I can't help you sell boats, but I can help you think about what you'll do after the show. <laughs> Who's a grandparent? Does it count to take a kid sailing with your grandparent? Saving sailing, in my mind, is not about waiting for the family to strengthen and hoping that it will result in more boat sales or more hardware or more programs. It's not what this is about. I, I prefer to look at it a completely different way, and that is to say that it's really about seeing that sailing done in groups, including friends and family, is in fact what strengthens the family, and it has a larger impact than that. It strengthens society as well. It's about the forest. I've got time for a couple questions if you have them. Um, we've had a lot of good talks, and uh, one of the things, uh, Nick, that you said, which I think is great, is it's not the sole responsibility of our industry to save sailing. Uh, you comment a little bit more about the, the sort of social component as you've built on here and how we as, as an industry 
industry, in your opinion, should go to support these initiatives in this program and this concept that you've got? Good. Good. So I heard Bill's, Bill's question. The question is, how do you support the initiatives that work that work well here? I, I, I think um, uh, I think that youth programming in its entirety, sailing programming, soccer programming, baseball programming, music programming, in its entirety, it has a place for skills development, certainly. Um, but what it has the effect of doing in the United States is segregating the generations. Right? And, and the problem with that is that what, what you get if a, a parent and a child are actually interacting together in a challenging environment is you get, you get commitment that goes two directions. It's exactly the, the right relationship. So what I think an industry can do is look to the types of programs that don't segregate the generations. And, and frankly, I can't tell you of a better thing to do than be on a boat with kids. I, I certainly know I don't want to go play soccer with my kids. And I can't play violin. I, I can't think of a better opportunity than the one you have in front of you for putting a value structure back into the way that we spend our time when we're raising our kids. So that's the criteria I'd like to see the industry apply to the way it thinks about its investments. Any other questions? This is a question for the Sail America Board. Would you be willing to um, have uh, children accompanied by their parents um, attend all of our boat shows for free? I, I don't have comment on it, except that I did notice that I didn't see any kids here except for the ones that were plants who were sailing around on the bay before. That was pretty clear. The answer is yes. Yeah, it is for The answer is yes. So the answer is yes from Bill. I can't make that call. It seems to me that you're losing a lot of people when they're 25. So how do you target that group? They get competitive, they're in a competitive, and then they move on. So how does Sail America target that 25-year-old? Sail America have to answer that question. Anybody else? I, I'm only halfway through your book, and I'm really enjoying it. But I, I think the um, most interesting concept that you, you discuss in your book is about chartering your experiences and losing control over them. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a uh, framework that I really like, and, and it, it didn't dawn on me until I, asked, I had kids, and all of a sudden I realized that I was, I was paying out a huge number of subscriptions to ways that they could spend their time. And, and if you think about it, I mean, there were these lessons and those lessons and these programs and those programs and these trips and those trips and oh my god the fees were huge but at the end of the day what I was doing is dropping them off <laughs> and paying the, writing the check right so the, the quick way of thinking about choices versus charters is that choices are is a choice is time that you make that you hold in your hand that, that you that you're in control over I can flip on the the cable television, or I can take a walk, or I can go sailing with my kids. That's a choice. A charter is time that you buy. One of the things that I think has happened in the last 30 years is we've gotten so good at consuming that we even consume the way we, we consume time. We even spend for the way we consume time. It seems to me a whole bunch of organic good is lost in that regard. A charter is time is time that somebody else makes for you. So you can't hold it in your hand and say there's, a, there's something good that came out of this. Make sense? So I think I have to s stop at this point because I've gone at my time. A uh, couple things. Uh, I didn't bring books and I'm not here to sell books, except that there are three here. So Jonathan will set up a, a thorough business card on the, on the way out and uh, we'll, we'll raffle off uh, three of these books and then come see me and I'll, I'll throw a signature in if you want it as well. And um, have a great show. Appreciate appreciate very much being here. Thank you, Nick. That was really very inspiring, and uh, and it touched upon a lot of uh, really critical issues. Helped to dispel some of the myths around sailing. I think demonstrated to us that you know there are choices. I think the challenge as an industry, and uh, it relates to one of the questions that was asked, you know, what can we as an industry and what can we as an association